I appreciate your faithfulness to come back. If you have your Bible, open it to two different places in God's Word. Open it to Genesis chapter 18. We'll finish chapters 18 and 19 today. But also open it to Hebrews chapter number 11. We have been in a series now on Sunday mornings called Faith and Blessing. And really it's been uh, kind of a, the lifestyle of Abraham and what, he, uh, what God did in his life and how we can learn from it, how we can be encouraged by it. Uh, we, we studied last week, we were looking at the first part of chapter 18, where there was a theophany. Now, theophany is a big word for in the Old Testament when Jesus shows up. And he came down with uh, two angels to uh, meet with Abraham and to uh, encourage him there, to let him know that uh, the, the promises that he gave him were still right on time. Aren't you grateful we serve a right on time kind of God? I mean, he might not be there on your time, but as long as he's there on his time, it's good. And, and sometimes we, uh, I think, you know, he, he can be a little slow, you know. We want him to get there in a hurry. But I'm just grateful he gets there at the exact right time that we need him. And uh, he comes and he lets them know that the promises is still true. And then he says, by the way, next year I'm going to come back and visit you, and your wife will be holding the child of promise. Sarah's 89 years old, and she's back there in the tent, and she just begins laughing. You know, sure, now I'm going to have a child, 89 years old. And, and God said, why did you laugh? Why did she laugh? Oh, no, I didn't laugh. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And, and here's the thing about it. She laughed at that moment because it was like unbelief, because how could this be? But yet, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that, that Sarah changed her attitude from that point. And she believed that God could, and she believed that God would fulfill his word. And he did. And she, Hebrews 11 is called a Heaven's Hall of Fame. It's about all those people that by faith did great and mighty things. Now, that's not, faith is not just for those other folks. It's for all of us. Matter of fact, Hebrews 11 tells us that the only way you and I are going to be able to please God is by faith. If you want to please God, and all you're doing is everything that you've seen and known before, and you're walking very comfortably in what you can do, you give what you think you can give, you serve where you think you can serve, wherever it feels good to you, wherever you're comfortable. I mean, it's, if you're just living your life by what you can do, that's many things, but it is not a life of faith. But if you can get outside your comfort zone, if you can get to that place of just believing and trusting and obeying, no matter what circumstances say, then God looks at that and he sees your heart and he sees your motive. He knows your thoughts and he says, now that is a person who sees me as a great big God. And that's the kind of person I want to bless. And praise God, we serve a God of blessing. When, when God came down to Abraham, he wanted him to know two things. He wanted him to know that he was the God of blessing, the God of life, also the God of death. The God of life and death. He said, I promised you, and I will fulfill my side of the story. I will make sure that you will have a child. A mighty nation, what we know of as the children of Israel. That even Christ came from the lintage of Abraham. And that God would do great and mighty things forevermore throughout all of eternity. Through the works of a faithful family. Giving himself unto the Lord. So here we see he gives them a picture of life. And Abraham was overjoyed that the child would finally come. And he loved being there with the Lord. Take your Bible, look in Hebrews chapter 11. Hope you still got your finger there. I got to flip over. I want you to see this attitude of Abraham. Are you there? Say amen. amen. Look with me in verse number 8. By faith. Faith, you can't get around it. We're going to have to live like it. Though you don't see it yet, still trust and believe. And submit to the great wisdom of our Lord. Follow him. By wisdom, Abraham obeyed. <clears throat> Praise God for that word obeyed. 
Obey means he knew and did accordingly. He didn't fuss with him. He didn't fight with him. He didn't debate with him. Lord, I believe, and because I believe, I do. And that's what we need to do in our everyday. We'll talk more about that in just a second. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. He lived in Ur of the Chaldees. God called him, and he left that place. And he began the journey to a place that he did not know. Where do I go? I'll take you. Just walk with me every day. I'll be your God. How long will it take? <clears throat> you don't have to worry about that. One day at a time. That's how long it takes. When you get there, you'll know. What do I need to take with me? What provision do I need to have? I'll be your provision. Listen, how many, how many people in here know how long you're going to live? You're going to live one day at a time. You're going to live one day at a time. <clears throat> there are three things that live forever. Y'all listening? God, his word, and the souls of men. You're either going to live here or you're going to live from the inheritance that God has for us. Or you'll live in the inheritance that you choose for yourself. But your soul, your spirit that is alive today, that is listening to me, your spirit that chooses to say yes or chooses to say no, that spirit is alive and is living and will live forevermore. He says, by faith he went to the place that God had called him to give him as an inheritance. It's yours. And he went out not knowing where he was going. There is a place of inheritance. Now, if you're a child of God, you've probably heard of this place called heaven. Anybody ever heard of heaven? We've been in a series on Wednesday nights for really pretty much most of COVID since we started back in uh, having Wednesday night services. And I, we've, been, we've been in a series I called The God of the Resurrection. We're the only religion in the world's history that has a God who is alive and well. Every other one is dead. And our God, the God of the resurrection, doesn't just keep it for himself. He believes in resurrection for others. And as a matter of fact, we get to be part of that resurrection too. You see, I'm going to die once. If God tarries, him, I'm going to die once. But that's just to this old physical body. My soul will live forevermore. Absent from the body, I'm going to be present with God. I've got an inheritance that's coming called heaven. Amen? You see, that's where God's going to be. And what's going to make heaven heaven is going to be God. It's going to be Jesus Christ. Because God is good. So everything in heaven will be beyond what we could understand as good. God is holy. So everything in heaven is going to be pure and righteous and, and just because he is a holy God. Everything, we should study the nature of God because as we learn of God, that's how we can learn what he's going to do for us. He gives to us himself. God is permanent. He is forever. So his gift to us will be forever more. Now listen, as Christians, we're living for the inheritance to come, but what we believe is coming affects our today. It affects our today. Because I believe there is life after this life that I'm living here. Because I believe that I get to leave this place and go and be with him. To enjoy his splendor. I have a relationship with him. And I get to grow to know him. That, that's going to be the glory of heaven it's not going to be the, the city four square. If you want to know about all that, come Wednesday night. I'll be preaching about that. But I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about all those things. There's so many people that say, yeah, I, I want heaven. I just don't want Jesus. Let me tell you, Jesus is heaven. And I get the great privilege of walking with him now. I get the great privilege of praying to him now. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning praying for this service and praying for you and praying that the word of God would find the right place in everyone's heart to scratch exactly where everyone is in need because his is the word that can make it. I've been praying. We can find God in his word. I praise God for the encouragement that comes with people. But listen, I've got that relationship. God's forgiven me. 
God loves me where I am, but will make me what I need to. So one day I'll be there perfect and complete. But until then, I have a relationship with one who's helping me. Who, when I mess, not if, when I mess up, meets me there and helps me there. Someone asked one, one time, if, if there were not for a heaven and a hell, would you be a Christian? And the answer is yes. It's a better way. It's a better way. It's a better life. It's peace. It's contentment. You see, I'm looking for something to come, but it affects my today. If you're looking for something to come, but Jesus Christ is not affecting your today, I, I want to tell you, you need to check out your relationship. You need to check out, check out your salvation. Because I don't know that if you're just looking, well, I, I'm getting my ticket punched. I'm going to heaven one day, but I'm going to live and do whatever I want to down here. Then that's not relationship. That's all about you. If you want the joy of this world, you can have it. But I'm here to tell you it's fleeting. Abraham, by faith, was looking for something to come. Look what it says in verse 9. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. This is not my home. If you went up to the courthouse in Habersham County, they say that Brian and Lynn own a house. I don't own a house. That thing's going to be there. I'll be gone. My kids can fight over that house, amen? And, and let me tell you, it's not all that you might think, right? I, I have to keep that thing up. I don't know about your house, but I got leaky faucets I got to fix. I got grass I got to cut. There, there's something about all these things that we have that's it's always falling apart. Can I get an amen? amen? I mean, that's what this earth is. It's just always just a temporary thing that we're going through. But I mean, I got something permanent. This is not my identity. Christ is my identity. If all you want to know is where I live and what I drive and how I dress and what I know and what I don't know, you're, you don't know. Because listen, Brian is defined not by how smart I am, but how great God is for me. My righteousness is filthy rags, but the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse those filthy rags. If I had to live my life on how good I am, I'd be in trouble. I don't want to live for this world. There are so many people that this world is all that they're living for, and they're trying to grasp it. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Listen, for a Christian, be wise and humble and obey, for tomorrow we live. We live today. I don't want to live like this world. I want to live like the next world. Look what he says. I'm, I'm living here like, a, like in a foreign country, dwelling in tents. A tent is temporary. I mean, you, you just set it up and you stay there, but you can pick that thing up and go and go to set it up in a different place. It's temporary. It will be weathered and worn. If you keep a tent long enough, I promise you one thing. It's going to leak. Amen? And the, and the place that you don't think it's going to leak, it will drip on you in the middle of the night. It will age. It will deteriorate. It's wood, hay, stubble. Everything of this world is going to go away. But look what he says here. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited. Abraham waited for the city. Not now, but he waited for the city which has foundations. Whose builder and maker is God. He said, I'm here in a temporary place, but I'm looking for something that's permanent. Eternity used to scare me to death. Now I understand that that's where the best of life comes, and I'm looking so much forward to it. Looking so much forward to it. There are so many people down here that are grabbing hold and holding onto this earth. They want their health to last forever. They want to go to death as the healthiest person in the world. And, and they want to go holding on to every nickel that they've ever made. And they want to uh, have all the things that this world can give you. Listen, this, this is temporary. 
This is not what it's defined about. I'm going to die. Amen? It doesn't matter if a person dies a week from conception. Because I don't care what the world says. When a baby is conceived, it is alive. God knows it. God gives it a soul. And that child is forever God's. Amen? Abortion is, we're going to stand in America, we're going to stand before God for this sin of the murder of children called abortion. But it doesn't matter if that child dies at two weeks and it hasn't even been born yet. That child is a child of God. There are some of us that are going to see children that we've never seen before when we get to heaven. Amen? But it doesn't matter if that child's five years old and drowns in a lake. It doesn't matter if that child's 18 years old and, and dies in a car wreck. It doesn't matter if that child's 38 years old and dies of a heart attack or 60 years old and dies of cancer or dies at 102 of old age. It really doesn't matter. It is appointed unto man once to die and after that, the judgment. You're either going to live here, and if all you want is what you have here, listen to me, that's all you got. If this is what you're living for, you better enjoy it while you can. As fleeting as this world is, as unfulfilling as this world is, as fickle as this world is, that's all you got. Abraham was looking forward to a foundation that was in heaven forever, and because of that, he wasn't worried about having to live in a tent in a foreign country down here. Are there things that are messed up in this world? Yes. I just mentioned abortion. That's one of them. I mean, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of sinful things that's happening in, in this world. But God's the God of life. But listen, church, he's also the God of death. Look in Genesis 18. Genesis 18. God comes down and he meets with Abram. There he is with Abraham. and He's about to leave. If you've got your Bibles there, begin looking with me. Genesis 18, verse number 16. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. Now, there was three of them. There was Jesus and two angels. So those three get up, and they're looking towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on the way. I guess they went to a place. I don't know if it was uh, the edge of a hill, or maybe they were there on a mountain. I'm not sure. But as they were looking, they could look over the valley. This is the place that Lot chose to the east. And there they're seeing the city that is there. And the, the men are moving ahead towards the city. Verse 17, the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and a mighty nation, that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him. I love that phrase, to know God. That's my life phrase, Philippians 3.10, that I may know him. He says, For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him and keep the ways of the Lord and do righteousness and justice, that he may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. God has known me to lead me, to walk with me, to show me his ways so that I can lead my family well, so that I can help them to do that which is good and right, so that I can give them the inheritance of eternal life as well, so that I can choose well and set a pattern for them to follow. And for all those that are around me. But then he says in verse 20, And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. He says, Their sin has come to me. The city of Sodom 
All you need to know about that city can be defined by that name in and of itself, Sodom. In all the cultures in our history of this world, when people would move to depravity, this would rise its ugly, dirty head. And people would choose such debauchery. And they would go after it in the lust thereof. And there's something about this sin. It says here that it's grave, but I, I want to tell you, all sin is grave before God. There are no big sins and little sins. There are no black lies and white lies. There are no ugly sins and beautiful sins. It's all sin. And God is a righteous God who is holy and pure and just. And hear this and hear this well. Sin judges sin. You say, well, God judges sin. Yes, he does because he is holy and pure. And if God looked at sin and ever just did the wink, wink, nod, if God looked at sin and said, I I'm just going to let it go this time, then a holy God would not be holy any longer. God cannot have a relationship with sin. That's why we need forgiveness. That's why we need the cleansing of Jesus Christ. For us to have a relationship with God, God must make us whole and complete in Jesus. But every sin is a blasphemy against God. Whether you have grown accustomed to it or not, whether it doesn't bother you any longer or not, it bothers God. It's grave to God. God hates sin. It costs Jesus his life, my sin, my sin. And sin will be judged because he is holy and righteous. Oh, God, if God is a God of love, God would never do that. God would never send someone away. God would never punish them. Oh, yes, he would, because he's a gentleman. Why would God send someone to eternity to spend eternity with him that doesn't want to be there? Oh, they want to be in heaven. Well, you make your choice here. How are you going to live there? Whether it's that 18-year-old killed in the car wreck or the 38-year-old with a heart attack or the 60-year-old with cancer or the 102-year-old that died of old age. You make your choices here that you're going to live with there. You're looking for there, and it should affect your here. If you just say, no, no, well, I'll go to heaven, but I'm going to be the God of my life down here. We call that idols. And either you're going to serve the Lord with all your heart or you're not. It's your choice. If you don't want a relationship with Christ, heaven is a relationship. Christ is heaven. If you don't want that, you don't have to have it. The thing about this particular sin, and there are many, many, many sins that do this, their heart grows cold. It grows indifferent because they're living for today because they only want what they want for today. They don't want anybody to tell them it's wrong. They want anybody <clears throat> to tell them that. You know, they look at us. The world looks at us today. <coughs> the world looks at Christians today and says, those people are judgmental. Don't judge me. I don't judge you. You judge you. What you do, you're going to be judged for. You're not, God's not going to judge you for something you did not do. See, one of the things I love about this relationship that I have with Christ is he's my advocate. He comes before a holy throne in heaven, and he defends me. He is the one who advocates for me. But for those who don't want an advocate, they're on their own. And here's the sad fact. The decisions that we make now, we live with forever. So the, in the good respect, if you choose life now, if you choose heaven now, if you choose forgiveness now, if you choose Jesus now, you'll have it forevermore, but you can have it down here. But if you don't want that, and you just want to do the wink, wink, nod to your sin, and you think everything's okay, and you want everybody else to be okay with it, please hear this. 
please hear this well. You will die in your sin and you'll spend your eternity separated from a holy God. Every time a person dies that does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, they go to something as the Bible describes as Sheol or the grave or hell and after judgment, the lake of fire. Do you know that Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven? Do you know that Jesus was very concerned for people that would spend an eternity separated from him? The Bible tells us in Peter, God is not willing that any should perish, but all to come to repentance. God wants everybody to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The gift of Jesus Christ on salvation is available to whosoever will. I love that phrase, whosoever will may come. But whosoever doesn't want to, you don't have to come. One heartbeat from hell. How many of you, just think right now, how many of you know someone that has died and you know that they did not know Christ as their personal Savior and Lord? They didn't live for Christ. They didn't confess Christ. They didn't want Christ. I remember when I was in school, three of my friends that were a year older than I was had gone to a party. They had left the party. Two of them, one, one just wanted a ride. They were going down Doug Epp Road in Dalton, Georgia, over 100 miles an hour down a two-lane road. I'm not sure exactly how far my home was from a tree, an oak tree about this big around. Probably between a, a quarter of a mile and a half mile, probably just over a quarter of a mile if you went in a straight line. And I remember on a Saturday night hearing an unbelievable sound. And my mom came running in and she said, what was that? I said, I do not know. Our windows were closed, but it was an unmistakable sound. They had run off the road. Lynn, Chris, killed instantly. The third one lingered for a while, didn't make it long. You know, when you're young, you've got that great big S on your chest. You think you can leap a tall building in a single bound. They think you're, you're faster than a speeding bullet. You, you can do anything, and, the, and, and you can look through the, 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 the glimmer of, of death and think that you're going to always come out on the other side. But here's the thing. We don't always. We don't always. I told you a few weeks ago, my, my friend had his son, 38 years old, had a heart attack, died in the front yard. Left a, a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and twins, I think, that were about between two and three. Four of the most beautiful little girls are going to grow up without a dad because that's life. You see, those things are important. No one knows the day that you're going to die, but you've got today, and you can make a decision. And you're going to live eternity based on that decision. Some will say, well, I'll make my decision later. You procrastinate that decision. You have the opportunity because of the wooing of God. God gives you that opportunity. Don't just think you can choose it whenever you want. He is sovereign and he will allow it. But you, when, he, when God comes to you and calls your heart, you better say yes. But hear this. He takes him to that place and they're looking out over it. And the two angels go ahead but the Lord lingers with Abraham. Abraham knows what's coming. And Abraham asks the question, Lord, would you kill the righteous as well as with the, with the unjust? Lord, if there were 50 souls in that city, would you spare the city for 50 souls? An intercessory prayer. Lord says, yes. For 50 souls. 
Lord, I, I shouldn't ask, but would you do it for 45? Yes. Lord, forgive me for saying it again, but what about for 40? Would you, would you spare the people in the plains of those cities? Would you spare them for 40 righteous souls? Yes. For 30? Yes. For 20? Yes. Lord, one more time, be, be patient with me, Lord. For 10 souls, would you spare the people? Though they, those unjust sinners deserve your punishment, would you spare them for 10? Abram knew, absent from the body, present with the Lord. When you die as a believer, you go to be with God. The greatest thing that could ever happen to me is that I die. People are so afraid of, uh, well, I don't want to ever die. Yes, I do. I don't want to stay here. Amen? I mean, I'm not too thrilled of the passing over, but I don't care as long as I get there. Right? He knew, but he was pleading for souls. Pleading for souls. His heart broke. This brings me under great conviction. We call ourselves the children of God, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church. And we are to be about the business of bringing God honor and glory. And the greatest thing that we as God's people can do is to love with God's love. And that means we're going to love the people God loves. Though they may be sinners. Come on. Though they may commit grave sins, listen to me, God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. And he doesn't want to give up, and Abraham didn't want to give up. Pleading for souls. Church, are we so consumed with American consumerism? Are we so consumed with politics and the economy? Are we so consumed with our jobs and our 401k and our security? Are we so consumed with our health and our hobbies that we forget that we are here in a tent, temporary, in a foreign field, on mission for God? To tell people that there's someone who loves them, who gave their life for them, that would give them joy unspeakable and full of glory if they would just repent of their sins and choose him. That's why we're here. It's what we're about. The convicting thing is this, in my own soul, I do not point fingers at anybody else. Please hear this. It's not just that people die in their sins, it's that oftentimes I don't even try to tell them about the goodness of God. To live a life without pleading for souls, to be in very comfortable and no longer burdened. When I woke up this morning at four o'clock, and I was praying for this sermon. And I was praying for God's blessing. You know what I began to feel in my spirit? I, I began to feel judgment because I felt like I wasn't doing as much as I could, and as much as I should. But God just kind of gave me comfort. Listen to me now. And I'm not everything I'm supposed to be. But there's one thing I am, and that's grateful. God began to tell me all the things that he has done for my heart, and all the things he's done for my soul, and all the, things that he, all the blessings that I have. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get that chatter that just reminds me of every mistake I've ever made. I know y'all don't ever feel that way. And, and I can think of all the mistakes and all the things that I've done wrong and all the things that I should have said differently and all the times that I should have been loving and all the times I should have been, been patient. But yet God was just telling me, son, just understand I love you. 
And he reminded me of his goodness. And he reminded me of all those things. And I, don't, I want you to know, I don't want anybody to go to hell. I don't want my worst enemy in the world to go to hell. I don't want anybody to be separated from God forever. Weeping, gnashing of teeth. He gave a picture to Abraham here. Oh, in chapter 19, those angels got there, and, and, and the people of the city did not listen. They didn't want to hear it. Lot saw them. Lot fell on his face. Lot, Lot said, come to my house. Oh, no, we're going to spend the night in the open, open city. Oh, no, you can't do that. It's almost like Lot grabbed their arms and took them to his place. But the people of that city, they didn't want to hear any of that. They came and banged on the door, and they demanded that they let those two angels out. So here's what the Bible says, so that they could know them carnally. And he tried to reason with them. They were beyond reason. Tried to press him in to the point that the angels came and pulled him through the door, shut the door, and blinded them so that they would go out. And then the angel said, you got to get your family and get out of here. Get your daughters, get your daughters, get your wife, get out of here because God's bringing judgment. And pushed them out early. They had to kind of fight over where they were going to let Lot was going to go. But he said, to the city of Zor. And they said, yes. As soon as they got to the city of Zor, fire and brimstone fell from the heavens and consumed those cities. Can I tell you, that's not the horrible part. The horrible part is when they closed their eyes in sin and opened their eyes to fire and brimstone like they'd never knew before. Hell is real. The lake of fire is real. If it's not real, then God's a liar. And his salvation doesn't work. But we know that it is. Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. Lord, give us eternal eyes. Lord, let us look forward to the promise that is coming. But Lord, because of that, let it affect our today. Because the world is looking for that which is not coming. And all they're living for is today. And church, when the Lord comes... May he find us being faithful to his call. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father God, we come before you, not in our own goodness. Lord, we, if it were not for your amazing grace and mercy, we would have nothing. But Lord, thank you for reaching out. <clears throat> thank you for that sweet spirit that shows us our sin, convicts us of our sin but lets us know that we don't have to stay there. That if we would trust and believe and confess our sins to you and ask you to save us, that a transaction, an eternal transaction, can occur and we can move from filthy rags to white as snow. And Lord, for many of us that are in this building today and that are watching online, for many of us, We've already confessed those sins to you. We've already asked you to do for us what only you could do. We are a child of God. But Lord, may we be looking towards heaven. But Lord, may we let heaven affect our today. And may we care for souls. Lord, help us to plead for souls like Abraham did. Lord, help us not to give up. Lord, when Abraham stood on that hill and saw the smoke rising to the sky and how his heart must have broken, Lord, may we look upon our city and see the judgment that is coming. Lord, break our heart as only you can. Father, use this service. Use your word. Father, may your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.